Can we have everybody uh, on the panel come up? Um, Aaron spoke of a measurement land grab, and in order to see the lay of the land, we created a table of these four methodologies, and we've put them in a chart. So I'm hoping we can bring that up while we have the panel so everybody can compare the basic criteria for each approach. Um, and while we wait for that, let's, let's get going. Um, I just want to note that time is tight. We have 10 questions. We have uh, five panelists, and we have 30 minutes. So <laughs> uh, let's start with metrics. What types of metrics do each of your solutions provide? Are the metrics comparable? Uh, do they vary by platform? And what are the best metrics to make comparisons across platforms? Alan, let's start. <laughs> you know, we never, I mean, you can probably get ratings and shares and things like that. I mean, it's really not what we try. What we really wanted to see is if in the real world, you can even do this stuff. I mean, it, you know, as we just heard, Eric, I mean, it's very, very hard. And so, you know, I mean, the metrics that we developed, I mean, I think you would have to play around. I mean, what we really have now is just the amount of time spent or, you know, things like that. But I mean, you could certainly convert them into conventional metrics. I would say one thing that I think was mentioned by Aaron and a couple of other folks, and that is, I think at the end of the day, we really do have to get simplicity. I mean, I'm a very simple guy, and I would like to use just like one number, and I always call it sort of that mothership number. I mean, there's no question now with cross-platform that we do measure all these things, but we don't get it into the monetizable currency. And I think that that, in, that alone should be the ultimate objective. And whatever it is, I mean, whether ratings need to be the case anymore or whether that's sort of an outmoded concept and you want to deal basically with exposures and impressions is something that I'd leave to everybody else to you know, have a conversation about. But, but I think at the end of the day, we need to wind up with really a single number that then can be deconstructed so that you can begin to see what essentially contributed to it. So uh, the solutions that Nielsen has developed across both the digital and linear ad model is to actually extend the concept of GRP that the industry has known to love and trade against. It goes back to that simple, what everybody knows and how the industry functions. And so across both online campaign ratings and digital program ratings, we've enabled that same GRP across time shifted viewing to produce the same data sets. And so that's kind of how we have solved um, the trying to make it simple, trying to allow for comparability and, br and bring everything together. Ready? So Charlene, I think you know, on the ESPN side, we've been saying for a long, long time now that there really are no new metrics for media. Yeah. The metrics that we've had for decades now work really, really well. And at the core of it, uh, virtually every electronic media that's been in existence for the last you know, 5, 50, 60 years has been evaluated based on average audience, essentially a rating. And the beauty of a rating is that it's a rate of usage. Uh, Alan talked about being able to deconstruct it. And I think that's the most important thing in, in, in how we build these systems. The ability to produce an average audience estimate so that we know at any given time how many people are using a platform or two platforms, but then be able to deconstruct it so that we know how we got to that number, either through reach or frequency or the combination. So that's where the how many, how often, and how long exists. And I think that's the problem with having just you know, empty impressions, let's say, on the, on the digital side, we've been using that for a long, long time. We, we, we deliver 10 million impressions to a client, but, but how did you get those impressions? Was it based on a rate or free, reach or frequency? So that's the knowledge that we simply don't have, and we need to get there. Yeah, I think Artie said it perfectly, but I think the only thing I'd add is you got to think about reach, frequency, and time from the perspective of content consumption and ad, ad schedule exposure. That's right. I think so. I think Aaron said this morning, uh, he, he, his, his words was screen time, reach, and frequency. Artie got up and talked about how many, how long, how often. I've heard Jack Washlock say the exact same things over different conferences and saying, if you can give me those three numbers, I can create any other metric that we want, or want out of that. So that's what we are doing in Blueprint. Now, digital has been different uh, because digital is the one media where people can interact and, and do more than be exposed to a message. So there's a whole slew of metrics that apply to digital, may not apply to television. But when you're looking at cross-platform, when you're looking at the connecting glue that allows you to compare the metrics of how often, how many, how long, that can then let you to GRPs and reach and frequency, you know, I think that they are the building blocks for that. And the hardest, by the way, 
is a consistent and precise measure of time across all these mm -hmm. platforms, yeah. in my opinion. Absolutely. Well, that actually gets to a, a question that's related. Um, how will you go from custom to syndicated? How will you scale and standardize? I, I was last. I can go first. Go ahead. So, <laughs> uh, so as, as you've heard multiple times, uh, we are in phase two of uh, Project Blueprint. Uh, that was the name Artie gave the project, and we like it so much that we are running with it. Um, it's all electronic, as you saw. Uh, all the data comes in through different meters and census measures. Loads, loads it into a production platform, gets delivered to ESPN through an online interface. Uh, from our perspective, after this phase two is over, we will just keep working on making it more automated, more stable, uh, putting the processes in place so the data can be delivered in a more timely fashion than it is today. Uh, and the checks that you put through uh, a, a production system you know, keep getting in place as we move along. So from our, that, that is our goal and that's where we are headed with, with Blueprint. And we could go out of order, and if it doesn't apply to your measurement, that's fine. You don't have to. I mean, look, I, I think, and I can't answer for Nielsen, uh, our, our, in terms of when they would take something like we've built and make, make it into a syndicated product, if they ever would, um, look, at the end of the day, we need a syndicated product that does what Blueprint does or what does what Allscreen does. The question is, who gets there? Who makes it affordable? who builds great analytics systems around the data. Yeah, Charlene, the first thing I would say is that I don't, the, the, the world of cross-platform, we, we've also said, you know, I, I worry about this notion of it having to be a currency, right, versus having the best available currencies for each individual siloed platform and that, and that cross-platform measurement simply allowing us to plan more effectively, propose more effectively, and then we go back to the currencies. That connection, of course, is very, very important. But there are different types of cross-platform measurement, and I think there are layers to this. And depending on how sophisticated you want to be as a media company or an advertiser, you're going to acquire this stuff, right? So we, we're not just using Blueprint. We have, we have lots of other sources. We're a big customer of USA Touchpoints, for example. We've been using GFK for over a decade in terms of understanding what, what consumers are doing. Blueprint or uh, whether it be all screen, these are different approaches that we need ultimately because this is passive ongoing measurement. They're not just periodic studies and that's the difference. So I think what we need for the industry to, to, to standardize this is we do need the standards. We need transparency. That we think is going to occur now under SIM's guidance for Blueprint, which is very, very important. And we need to also, I think, make a compromise, right? How far do we need to take this? And let's not let you know perfect the enemy of, of good. Otherwise, we'll end up with nothing. So uh, Nielsen on kind of syndication, because of the fact that we're starting with TV, and ultimately our goal is to help include the other viewing sources into the TV ratings in which people are doing a very efficient buy and sell against. Uh, we work with the MRC and all the processes to basically include the additional um, rules and viewing and, and all the logistics around the methodology. We're doing that with our mobile TV ratings. We just had a committee meeting just yesterday um, to discuss kind of what Nielsen's doing, educating the clients, getting their involvement, getting their input. Because obviously, at the end of the day, for us, syndication means acceptance by the industry, because Nielsen doesn't decide syndication, the industry does. Um, on the digital program rating and OCR side, we follow the exact same process. And so for us, to, there, it's not about scale, it's about time and acceptance by the industry and the rules, as you mentioned, of what, what does this all mean, how does the industry want to accept it, um, how does the MRC want to play a part in it. Um, and at the end of the day, it, it ends up with confidence, right? So what we want to do is ensure that the industry has confidence in the numbers that we produce so that the industry can trade very effectively. I just want to make a very quick comment on what Artie said. Excuse me, because I would agree with them halfway. I, I, I think that a currency has got to be, at the end of the day, yeah. you know, sort of the ultimate holy grail. Because it's what we do, it's what we sell. On the other hand, I also agree that we should never let the perfect get in the way of the good. And I think that a lot of what we're doing now, whether it was the stuff that we did with Comscore or Project Blueprint, these are great first steps, and they give us an ability to have some insights we normally wouldn't get. But, if we, but a currency, when you think about it, is everybody agrees we're going to use this to transact business. And as long as we don't get to that, 
There'll always be lots of proprietary and different kinds of things coming in that kind of muck things up. And let's face it, nobody has, with the exception of ESPN's billion dollar research budget, <laughs> nobody has the resources to kind of deal with all of these things. Everybody at the end of the day would love to have a single number that they can use. And I'm, I'm being overly simplistic. My only point is right now we don't have it and I don't see it coming in the short term future. No question about it. But I think, I would think the industry needs to commit that the long term goal is to wind up with a currency. Are you planning to measure ads and program content separately? And will you have the flexibility if you do that to unpack and then re-aggregate? All right, I'll That's start right. out of order. Um, so that is what Eric was referring to. Uh, we look at it in four layers, of which ad model is a very um, important layer because the ad model represents um, the reach and frequency of that target. Um, dynamic and uh, uh, targeted digital ad model uh, may be more effective to reach very specific individuals and genres of people, but likely the total reach is much, um, is much lower. And so our digital program reading solution that we're launching this year um, will enable basically you to measure anything outside that C3 linear ad model whether that's inside the C3 window, but using dynamic addressable advertising, or it's day four and beyond. And then obviously our linear TV ratings, we continue to extend that to measure all screens. So for us, there's not really an unpacking because the way we look at the industry and the way that we look at measurement, we're already unpacking that at the atomic level so that there's no kind of modeling or fusion or work you have to do to try to add it all back up because we're actually separating it out at the forefront. See, TV has always had a tight relationship between content and programming, and, 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 and the ratings to a program have served as a surrogate for the ratings to the commercial. Comscore is a digital native. We grew up in the internet where content and advertising are generally two separate things. So our systems and the reportings we put out there look at programming content and program reporting separate from commercial reporting. Uh, as part of Blueprint, we are doing both. We are doing the program uh, tracking and program reporting that you saw from ESPN. Uh, and, and as for some of the SIM members as part of the project, we are also doing uh, tracking of commercials across the multiple platforms and reporting the relevant metrics for that. We have always advocated uh, separation of, of ad measurement and content measurement. The concern had been that ad, ad measurement uh, in this sort of dynamic, you know, inserted world um, was moving ahead of content. And to us, that was a problem because we, we essentially need content measurement from a, we need it from a media perspective, but you also need it from a planning perspective, all right? The whole idea of, of planning is where is the audience going to be, and that's where I put my ad, and then we'll see what happens, you know, uh, by evaluating the ads as they run to see what the delivery was. So um, they need to be separated um, because we have different models uh, that are being executed on the advertising side. But the concern on our side has always been that content was always last, right? And, 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 and really that's what Blueprint is about, and which is why it's so important that in this next phase two of Blueprint, we will be, we will be testing um, ad content running across uh, the multiple platforms. And the only thing I would add to what Adi just said is, you know, and, and Jane said it in the opening, that she changed the, t the, the title of this from cross-platform video measurement to cross-platform content or yeah. content measurement, media measurement. Because for ESPN, uh, you know, it is about video, but it's about all the content they have on the website that they need to monetize. So any kind of solution, yes, tracking video cross-platforms is critical, and we, we do that, and, but we look at that as a subset of the overall cross-platform solution where you're taking into account apps and websites and all kinds of content games. that ESPN has the uh, games, uh, that ESPN and other clients have the ability to monetize. And Charlene, this kind of gets to, there is an economic element to this whole yeah. thing, right? And that's probably, <laughs> you know, the, 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 the biggest factor. Um, not everybody in this room is going to be interested in investing in a five or six or seven cross-platform solution, right? We may only want video. We only may only want in and out of home television, whatever the case may be. And, and, and that's something that, you know, whatever sort of architecture we come up with is going to have to address, which is why I talk about, um, and, I, and, I th and I think um, all screen does this as well, it's fairly modular in nature. Uh, and any solution like this is going to have to be fairly flexible in terms of uh, dealing with the, the budgets that we have available to us and the needs of the buyer and the seller. That sort of gets into this next question.
Can your measurement of exposure to content in ads across screens also be linked to measures of ad effectiveness, ROI, sales data, or cross uh, screen attribution? Everybody's looking at me, so I well, guess I'm there. Yeah. I can go first <laughs> again, I don't mind. The answer is yes. Um, and, and I'm going to borrow Adi's word modular. Uh, we are working with TRA, for example, who is connecting CPG purchase data with television data. Uh, digital data is feeding into that, so you can look at the impact and the response and the ROI of advertising across screens. Uh, we've also started working with IRI um, to start uh, uh, importing the data into mixed models uh, so they can also s discreetly look at the impact of digital on uh, the overall media mix, marketing mix models that they are delivering to the client. So we are making movements in, in, in that direction and helping clients link. So Artie's question is about exposure, who, how many, how long, and then what happened to that, which is Aaron's question. That goes to you know, the solution set that we are putting together with the other clients. Yeah, I, I mean, all screen can't do that. Um, Pete taught me a while ago that you can't use fusion to measure effectiveness, and I, I trust him. Um, <laughs> it, but I think it's, it's a, you know, I think as we get more you know, it gets back to Aaron's point earlier that as we get more sophisticated in being able to craft cross-platform packages, being able to measure some return like sales is crucial. We have to have that capability because the end result is not you had a really nice reach in frequency like the slide I showed. The end result is we drove sales or we drove brand metrics or something like that. So for Nielsen, we're doing this as well. Um, we already do this today, and some of the applications we've done with Nielsen Catalina solutions, obviously hooking up the buy data with the watch data, um, the media consumption. Uh, we also do it, um, you know, we just recently kind of did um, a Scarborough thing where we extended it beyond just um, into online and radio and TV and uh, linking that up with the Scarborough data. And then uh, we're also uh, doing things around local buyer reach, which we announced um, just recently that we're actually extending that out to leveraging set-top box data in addition to that input of taking the local currency TV data and matching that up. Um, and we're actually um, evolving that. And this is where we introduce some of the uh, introduction of learning and understanding the, the best use of set-top box data um, because the top box data can be very messy when it comes to our currency. So uh, we have a lot of applications. We do a lot of media mix modeling. Uh, Neil Cantor and that group live and breathe it. They're out in the industry preaching it, developing models against it. And so we use the best of our media consumption data to link with the best of our buy data as well as even outside CRM databases or other sources that clients want to match up with. So Charlene, I would only add that this sort of relates to the question of flexibility again, right? Mm -hmm. Measuring exposure is one thing. That's sort of a simple question. And again, it's hard to do, mm -hmm. uh, but it's simple. The question of impact relates to what the objectives are from that advertiser, right? And so it's all about having sort of a, a deep toolbox uh, and being able to choose the right solution for impact based on what those objectives and questions are. So can we have a hybrid measurement in television on a national basis? All right, I guess that's directed at me. So um, I'll take it after you. <laughs> I think there are a couple on the panel. All right, so um, if you speak of uh, the currency, which is um, today the national sample that delivers against that, um, as we roll out mobile, um, that is actually introducing somewhat of a non-traditional hybrid measurement, meaning that it is not a panel only. We are using our SDK technology to collect every census view. As Eric described, we are using a third-party data provider to help provide the demos against that, and then we're calibrating that using our best-in-class single-source panel. So I would argue that come the fall, um, hybrid measurement has come to national television. Um, and then obviously we'll look at things of doing the test and the stuff that we're doing around PPM. We haven't rushed it because at the end of the day, PPM was built for a very specific reason. It was built for radio. The panels were built for radio. They represent a metro area, not a DMA area. The meter itself was built for radio. So what we need to make sure is that before we introduce that type of measurement into TV, that we're highly confident that the code capture rate, the representation of the panel, which today doesn't represent the TV universe, how you bring and align that data inside of a currency um, to ensure that we don't introduce bias 
against viewing estimates that we feel very confident. But the first step for us is the mobile. And then obviously we are working on, on the out of home with the PPM, um, but that will take some time. So why shrinking fast, as we saw in uh, Alan's slide, TV is a big component of cross-platform. And the TV solution that we have as part of the, the cross-platform solution does take into account set-top box data and does take into account the PPM data, which Artie mentioned we got as a lesson from Nielsen Audio. Thanks for that. Uh, you know, the, it's person's level and, and all the research that Sim have done and we've seen around the, the pros and cons of panels versus set-top box data and how each one of them in, in and of itself has limitations, but you put them together and you cut the demos uh, from uh, a person's level measure and apply that to deep census level data from a set-top box site. That's exactly how we are putting those two data sets together. Yeah, I, I, I think that hybrid, honestly, is inevitable. Mm -hmm. and, and this is coming from somebody who, I mean, I'm, I am a single source guy. I, if the world was you know, great, we could do this with single source, but it's been estimated by people who know much more than I, that if you really wanted to do single source and measure, you know, basically, TV and the internet and all these other kinds of devices, you would need a panel of respondents as close to a million individuals because that's how fractionalized, say, the internet is. And we already have experience when Nielsen did try to use the single source panel to measure, you know, TV extended, or I, I, I never know your names, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's just, okay. But you know what it is. But I mean, to measure, you know, the viewing of, uh, of television shows on the internet. There just weren't enough people. We had too many zero cells. Yep. So I think the question is not, are we going to have a, a hybrid panel? We are. The question is, can we do it right? Yep. And how do we do it in a way that basically, you know, gives us the most valuable insight and the most stable results? Yep. But I, I think there's no question that it's single source as the ultimate currency will probably fade away. Well, look, and I think the other thing we got to think about, and, and, you know, as an industry, you know, I don't think we do this especially well, is future-proofing our business, right? You know, I mean, we've, we've all spent years catching up. And, you know, one of the things I don't think we should do today is presuppose that the ad model and the content delivery model that we use to run our businesses today is what it's going to be like five years ago. I think one question would be, if you think about potentially what five years could look like, does, does hybrid help us? Does starting to build hybrid today so that we're ready for what you guys, Alan, what you guys are doing with um, com your, your integration with Comcast? We probably need hybrid to be able to measure that. We should start those discussions today. We shouldn't wait any time. What about timing the release of the data and the frequency of reporting? Digital is almost real time. There's a bit of a lag with TV. How do you solve for this? So I would say that um, frequency is, is kind of a, uh, in real time, are two pretty overused terms right now. The reason I say that is because um, real time matters in only the fact that the data actually changes. If the data doesn't change enough or often enough, then real time doesn't matter because it's of no value. If it does change and you can't consume it quick enough to make, take action against it, it's also of no value. Yeah. It's, you know, it's often like if a coach were to use a sundial to time athletes and they keep looking at the sundial to see the performance, it's likely not going to change using a sundial. So I think the key is for yeah. us is with Nielsen, what we do is we use, for instance, in the digital space, we let folks use the OCR overnight delivery to help inform how the viewership could change over day parts or time of the week and put better algorithms out into their targeting engines. That doesn't mean that um, having a, you know, if you think about a TV video, for instance, happening on a mobile device, you know, the likelihood of every second that audience changing frequently enough that you'd want to influence the algorithm to go target differently, I don't think the industry's quite there yet. And so for us, it's about getting timely data so that people can build better algorithms to plan ahead, not necessarily in real time. So that's kind of how we see how best we can help um, real time. And we've done that with you know, a number of ad serving platforms on the digital space. Um, we've done that with a number of even real time bidding platforms. And then obviously with the Google stuff, we allow people to get real time campaign measurements to just ease the integration. But our, our point of view is we're not about fixing the results, we're about helping to get a better homework score. So how do you basically help these guys 
deliver better audiences that help benefit the whole ecosystem, the publishers as well as the advertisers alike. So as you said, I mean, digital is all about real time, um, and a lot of our campaign reporting does go out in a fairly real time basis. Blueprint data goes out on a monthly basis currently, uh, because all of the complexity involved in collecting and processing and modeling the data. Um, all that goes out on a monthly basis for ad campaigns or for special events like the Olympics, you can get custom slices of the data, so you can look at uh, event-driven um, uh, uh, audience measures. Uh, and over time, we'll shrink that. You know, we'll shrink that to whatever level the clients, you know, would want us to, and it's, it's practical to get us, get us there. I think it also sort of depends on the decisions you're trying to make with mm -hmm. the data you're trying to get. So we get all screen data monthly. It takes six weeks because Pete's sitting here and he's not at his <laughs> office cranking out our data. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, in an ideal world, if we had very timely, overnight, true cross-platform data, I think, uh, you know, any of our programmers would love that stuff. I mean, I go back a year ago, you know, the Boston bombing story for CNN was a series of, it was almost like a series of mini-series which, where each part of that event launched differently depending upon Twitter, mobile, digital, TV. And, and if you know how an event is merging and you could alter your programming that way, that's great. You know, will we ever have that data? I don't know. Yeah, the need, the need it, it is a question of quality, and it's a question certainly of, of processing. You know, processing multi-platform data, as a lot of I think these folks know, is no easy task, and you want good quality data. But we're also, we're also already living in sort of a layered world when it comes to um, the, the release of data. And the first thing that I'll say, on, on, a, on a daily basis, the question of multi-platform is less important than it is over the course of a few days, a week, mm -hmm. or a month, right? So there really isn't that urgency that we have. In the, in the digital space already, you know, we have our own first-party data. We've got Adobe or, or Omniture data that we get on a daily basis, and it's really measurement of devices, uh, but it's census-level data, and we can make use of that data. We can make decisions. We need to make decisions on that data. It's the multi-platform stuff coming out on a later basis. But I think, I think we will get to a point in this industry where we, if we get to weekly delivery of data that we can then break down by individual day once it's been processed and QA'd, that would be a huge victory for the industry. Um, I'd like to leave five minutes at the end for questions, mm -hmm. so we don't have a lot of time, but I have two really important questions. <laughs> so let me throw it out. We answer uh, in 28 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> what are the next steps that need to be taken for cross-platform measurement? What are the top priorities? What are the challenges? And what are the major components that we need to make it right? <laughs> people, have to, people have to be willing to write a check. Yes. And you have to be willing to support yes. some yes. of these initiatives. And I think that Blueprint, for example, is, is one of those. I mean, you know, it's, it's R&D. But it's very hard when, you know, only a few companies, all kidding aside, are willing to come in and, 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 and put in the resources to do it. So that's what it is. I mean, we've been talking about this stuff, folks, for at least five years. And finally, with Blueprint, you know, we had another way to do it. We have, we have Nielsen doing their thing, and that's great, and I think we need to support their efforts as well. But, you know, I've always viewed that the more the merrier, the better the competition. And so it really is up to the industry to step up and really give real support to some of these efforts. Yeah, and I, I would add, and I, I look back to the, the 3MS initiative that started a few years ago, which was a major step forward in terms of industry organizations coming together and, and leading the industry towards, you know, standardization. Cross-platform is a different thing uh, in that we're trying to build a <coughs> system. We need transparency. We need the industry to evaluate it. It's going to take investment. But we do need the guidance of organizations like SIM, like the ARF, in partnership with other organizations such as the ANA and the, and the, and the 4As, as well as the IB, to all get involved. Um, and evaluation, and, and hopefully somewhere along the line, we'll reach agreement. Quite frankly, I'm thrilled right now that we're in the position that we are today because we're making progress. And I think the most important thing as we leave this room is to keep the momentum moving, in my opinion. This hey, last can I, can I sure. add just mm -hmm. one thing? So look, this is going to sound somewhat sacrilegious, and I don't know how you do this with the lawyers controlling this, but <laughs> the reality is we're living in a world where when I go to my, sale, my digital sales guy with Nielsen Online data, they throw staplers at my head. Um, you, know, the you know, the fact of the, of the market is Comscore has a great 
ownership of being the currency for digital. Nielsen has the great ownership of being the currency for TV. There are other really cool you know, developments like what Symphony is doing in terms of cross-platform. And you know, look, the reality might be the ideal solution is they all get in a room and figure out how to build the best thing for our, their clients, because we actually happen to be all their clients. And, and then you figure out how you all make money doing it after the fact. <laughs> and, and, and then you guys go to jail. No, but I, but but look, that's the you know that's my point in the beginning. I, I you know, I would love Blueprint if it had Nielsen TV data. Well, you know that sort of segues into this last question, which probably deserves a panel unto itself. But <laughs> as we roll out cross-platform measurement, there's a siloed nature to the media industry in budgets, buying, selling, even data collection and granularity. How do we break down the silos, and do we need to develop flexible measurement tools? Big question. And we have nobody well, from the no, agency I'll, here. I'll so. start it. So first of all, I think <laughs> we should tee that question up for the agency panel later. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I think as media sellers, we all react to the agencies. Um, I think the fact that we're going to have to live in a hybrid sale, uh, in a hybrid wor world where there are going to be, sometimes you sell stuff together, there's going to be some stuff that's always going to be bought programmatically and by a separate group in the agency. I mean, I don't think we're, you know, we can't dream that it's all going to ever be done together. That's, uh, that's, that's not reasonable. Um, you know, we have, uh, you know, I actually put, think that's a place where Within research at Turner, we're trying to get the salespeople to talk to each other because we don't necessarily have integrated sales. But I think it's a question for the panel later. Thank you. And, and, I, and I think we, we, we are sort of in that, that, that we're beginning that period of change right now. You know, based on the ANA's data, if only 20% of, of investment in advertising is done on a multi platform basis today and within three years, that's going to move to about half we should see that reflected in, in the way that we buy and sell. Can I just amend, well, I just want to say one thing about how do you support stuff, because I think I wasn't all that clear, and it's a little bit of a self-serving commercial. SIM is the only organization out there that has only one purpose, and that is to advance measurement. You know, that takes nothing away from ARF or from 4As or ANA, but they have many, many other things to do. And I think the reality is that if, if people here and their companies would join SIM, it would give a critical mass to this effort. That's how you can take money. I, I know I sound like Jerry Lewis, but I mean, that's how you can take <laughs> money and really put it to something. Because I mean, otherwise, like, well, what do I do with my check? I mean, you know, I understand that. SIM is doing that. And again, I think that SIM needs to be as broad as possible and embrace all these other organizations. But from my point of view, if you're really serious about moving this needle forward, this is the best possible opportunity to do it. And I would, you know, suggest that you see Jane and sign your membership pledge. <laughs> well, that's a very good way of segueing <laughs> to the audience. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? Tony? Not only does that require another panel, it requires a group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, 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 and lawyers. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, I guess that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you, panelists. Thank you. There's a uh, about 20, 20, 25 minute break. Just come back by 5.04 so we can uh, hear about USA Touchpoints. <laughs>